It was ever written by me, and um, it's called Time of Awakening.
here we are again. Uh, episode 3131. 31. I don't know if anybody's noticed the new uh, banner yet, but thanks to my boy Roy Fox for hooking me up with the new one. Looks looks all badass. So, yeah, and then I got this in today. Lori, I got this from Lori today, this nuclear salt shirt. Or nuclear salt. <laughs> Fucked up. Nuclear death shirt. I mean, obviously, not nuclear salt. Nuclear salt rules too, though. But yeah, nuclear death. Uh, so yeah, totally sick, man. Hell yeah. So anyway, like I said, episode 31 of Gemini Out All Badass. Uh, you know, kind of doing these interview shows. Um, maybe not as frequently, but They've all been, actually, the last ones have all been pretty goddamn good. Uh, so, the one with Tim from AC. Uh, who was it? Scott Cyanide. Mark. I mean, not Mark. Uh, Chris from Rotrevor. Uh, getting a little rusty. I keep fucking up. So, anyway. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah. Uh, going to be badass today too uh so i saw I was watching something the other day and it made me laugh just real quick uh, somebody asked a question name somebody i guess somebody famous hey i don't know that uh you'd like to punch um <laughs> uh, for me that's easy it's always and will always be uh, uh bono from youtube can't stand that fucking guy. Cannot stand that fucking dude. Hate that band. Dude's total douche. So let me know in the chat. Who, who do you want to fucking who do you want to punch? Uh, you know, somebody you just can't fucking stand. For me, it's always that dude. I don't know. I don't know why. But it just bothers me. Uh, also, uh, just a reminder. About Sound Exchange. Sound Exchange does support the show. I'd like to thank them every time I I do a show. I was actually there yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, and I picked up this uh, Satyricon Shadow Throne reissue, uh, the second album. I haven't hadn't heard it in years, and uh, it's a damn good album. Uh, last really the last one I like from them. So, uh, so I'm glad they. Uh, I guess Moonfog, yeah, Moonfog reissued this, and I picked it up to Sound Exchange. So, uh, Sound Exchange in Houston rules. Uh, support them. You see me talking about them all the time. Uh, so, in Houston, best record store in Houston. So, uh, support them. SoundExchangeHouston.com. All right. All right. So anyway, so who y'all who do y'all who do you want to punch? Who do you want to punch? Anybody? Anybody? I see a lot of a lot of people I haven't seen in a while in here. Look at that. Uh, in the chat. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Steam. <laughs> Roy wants to punch Steam. <laughs> uh, anyway. All right. So uh why did they relocate? Because the building they owned, um, well, they didn't own it. They were uh, kind of renting out. The landlord decided to sell it, and uh, they kind of got caught in the middle, but they found a cool spot, mm -hmm. found a really cool spot um, on 101 North Milby. But you can find all that information on soundexchangehouston.com. Hey, uh, Jedi Spam. Could be in the works. Could be in the works. That's all I'm saying. Uh, so anyway, uh, another thing I get asked: Hey, uh, when are you can? How come you don't have uh, that many women on the show? Well, I mean, uh, I haven't been doing this very long, first of all, and I have had uh, Lori, Nuclear Death, has been on the show, and I had Sharon on on the six point six six questions, which you everybody needs to check out. Check out all those and uh, ask Sharon to come back to do one of these live things. Uh, so I guess everybody, you're not here to see me. You're here to see her. So let's uh, welcome to the show, Sharon. Hello. Hello. 
How's uh Pittsburgh or, or wherever you're Pittsburgh, right? Yeah. Cool, 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 yeah. cool. Yeah, uh -oh. we're 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 low fifties, so it's still uh bearable. So low fifties, man, that's like that uh I guess if I were to compare that to here, that would be like twenties here, I guess. Like well, what it would feel like to us, you know. Well, we've adapted, you know how that works, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like in the summertime, if you get down to 70, you're freezing, you know, so we, we've slowly like we're adapting. So, um, so when it, we first got into the fifties, you know, it was cold, but now it's like, you know, we're, we're adapting to it. So it's, it's weird how, how that happens, you know, you know, what else is weird? This guy right here, look at that. At 2 12 a.m. and he's supposed to be asleep. I'm assuming he, I'm sorry. Uh he or she, but I'll make an uh, exception here. Durketta rules. That's 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 insane. Oh, thank man. you. Thank you. <laughs> I would I, I would I would uh prefer sleeping myself. <laughs> oh, well I don't I'm not sure. I, I I'm not no, sure no, 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 I don't mean I don't mean like over this. I just mean like <laughs> to, you know, for to watch me, you know, I, I would prefer sleeping ever. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, because me. Is that Roy? Yeah, Roy said. Yeah, Tim. Roy. Tim's in the house. Uh, a lot of people hello. saying hello. A lot of people saying hello. So anyhow, um, uh, I guess, I guess the news. You actually had some news yesterday about the band playing. Uh, the band being Derkata playing. Uh, getting back on the that Atlanta Fest. Uh, what's it called? The uh, Mass destruction. That's the one. The mass yeah. destruction. But uh, so yeah. Uh, any 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 anything you'd like to share on that? Yeah. Um, well, we were supposed to play it this year, which was this this current weekend, um, and but it's about two weeks after we confirmed is when Trish got her diagnosis of breast cancer, and we weren't sure what was what all that meant at the time. Cause she had to, you know, wait for doctor's appointments, test, test results to come back and all of that. And, um, and it's like, yeah, we, you, you know, we, we can't play it. So when we talked to the promoters, they were real cool about it. And so, you know, we canceled for this year, but we actually rescheduled, but we didn't tell anybody that we rescheduled, yeah. you know, um, and they just, um, announced the first round of the bands um yes yesterday i think it was no saturday saturday they announced them and um yeah i'm pretty i'm pretty excited you know you know venom ink and uh yeah I saw that. <laughs> benediction i'm I, i'm real excited about <clears throat> that so yeah that's cool uh that's how that that'll be our first southern show we haven't made it um, down south at all yet so yeah uh yeah uh, mr fires mr F i like mr fires a lot there on there uh um, yeah i i gotta i don't remember them from back in the day it's like i i gotta i gotta refresh uh myself on them because uh yeah. i don't know if i had anything if they were like maybe on uh like a you know our comp tapes that we used to trade around or not but um but yeah i see they're like a pretty big deal and i'm like Shit, I don't even remember them. <laughs> yeah yeah they're, they're a cool band uh uh put out a couple albums on osmos like early 90s and stuff like that so uh good band um thank you your, what is your, 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 uh, your, your kid, yeah your kid that's the first time anybody's ever complimented anybody's like background on the show today it's on this show, so. this is this is like where i end up um you know um, one of my spots in my house, this is where I have my morning coffee and all that kind of stuff. And it just seems, um, you know, cause I have like an Island here and it just seems easy for the setup of this, um, versus going into any, any of the other rooms. So, yeah, that's cool. Um, uh, so, uh, I guess like I pretty much start off every other show, uh, how how did music like come into your into your into your world into your life growing up was it was there a lot of music being played around the house and uh could you speak a little bit about that um yeah i i mean my uh mom and dad loved the travel and you know so there was always the radio on and at that time it was 
um, you know, I guess like the soft rock stations and stuff, but it was stuff like, you know, we were hearing like, um, like cats in the cradle, um, Aerosmith dream on, you know, like, yeah. if, you know, when you look back at when those were released, that's early seventies, you know, so now I was born in 1970. So, you know, we're traveling, you know, going to visit relatives or whatever. And, you know, the radio is on and it, you know, it's, it's all this cool stuff. Um, and my dad likes to fly and stuff. So, you know, we would, we used to go out to Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And then where there was a guy that was um, uh, playing an acoustic, like we had the campfire, the whole, the whole bit. And, um, and I don't know what his name was or whatever, but he, he recently was signed to something or whatever. And, I just thought it was like so cool, like just watching him play and all that kind of thing. So um, like I started wanting to play at a really young age and, um, you know, I didn't actually get a guitar until I was 15. We had an acoustic. It was my brother's, but it was it, it was in such bad condition. I mean, it was like strings were never changed and it had high action and you know, my dad was like, well, you're not playing that. You're not going to spend money on, you know, electric guitar, you know? So it was always that kind of a, a thing. And then finally, um, you know, when I was 15, I was able to talk my mom into buying me one. So. And would this be it? Yes, that is. That's my Electra strap. <laughs> which I wish I still had, you know, I traded it in for my Gibsons. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I think it, I think it was called Gundel Gray. Um, I still have that pink chair. My aunt, my late aunt Donna, um, she got it from, cause she does, she, she did hair like at theaters and, you know, in a salon and stuff like that. So yeah. she would work um, like stage shows. And that was like something from like, like a stage production and they were getting rid of it. So she was like, no, I want that for my niece. So I still have it. That's cool. And the guitar still too? No, I had, no, I had to trade it in for my Gibson. Oh, here, all right. So yeah. I got to ask you about these posters in the background. What's going on there? Yeah, there's Motley Crue. I was a big Motley Crue fan back then. And, and that next to them, I, I bet that is um, Iron Maiden. And that's, <laughs> Uh, Bruce Willis with um, wait 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 Bruce Willis. I mean Bruce Bruce Dickinson. <laughs> where where Bruce Willis come into the band? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like me saying nuclear salt to all of Yeah, oh, yeah. I think I'm pretty sure that's our maiden. You know, he might be wearing like that uh, that mask. Yeah, you know, Skinner shirt. About. Who's wearing a Skinner shirt? That'd be me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I'm like, I thought he was talking about on the on the poster. I'm like, how can how can you see that? Uh, oh, it was, it was a comment. I was wondering why. <laughs> no, yeah, 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 no, no, yeah, yeah. Scott said, uh, skin uh, Scott, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. So that uh, that was your first. Uh, did you did you uh, like write your first riff on that guitar? Yeah. Um. That was, you know, when we did, were doing our 666 questions, um, yeah. I talked about a book, a tablature book that I had. Uh -huh. And um, and I found it uh, online. So I, ha I bought it. I mean, this may be in my basement somewhere, but this is the book that, um, you can see it, but this is the book that I first got when I was playing guitar. Uh, hold on, let, and, me, let, me, uh, let me put, yeah, yeah, let me put you... Uh solo right. here so everybody can see it but you know yeah so these are the the songs oh or here we go these yeah. are the songs that um you know i was trying to learn and um you know there's breaking the law like you know i remember working on that and, <laughs> yeah. and as i was going through the book now i know why i was only doing bits and pieces because it's written in half tab and have and half um, you know music, so um, you know it. So 
it, it's I, I, I'm just, I think it's, this is what really turned me off with trying to, to, to you know, play along the tab. Um, you know, I'll show you an example. Uh, let's see. Like here's here's uh, bringing on the heartbreak. <laughs> Hell yeah. You know, I don't know if you can see. Uh, yeah. You know, so it's like, but then there's like some parts of it. Well, it'll direct you. So there's like little you know sections that'll give you the tablature, and um, so that yeah that that was you know way advanced for me. Um, still advanced for me. <laughs> it looks like yeah, that looks like a that looks like a pretty pretty good set list of songs though. It it is. It's uh. <laughs> You know, you know, uh, you know, bang your head, breaking the law, bringing on the heartbreak, crazy train, come on, feel the noise, don't tell me you love me, flight of Icarus, flying wow. high, fooling, hell bent for leather, wow. lick it up, lights out, living after midnight, photograph, rock of ages, rock a rolla, slick black Cadillac, and the trooper. I mean, it, that's, yeah. That was that. This is my first like guitar uh, book, but um, you know, you know, it's it. I didn't know. I I know like uh, how to read music just in first position. I get that's then after that it gets way way over my head. Um, so I might take a stab at at some of these, um, but yeah, it was you know just way over my head, and I started just kind of it was easier just to write my own <laughs> well th there's a there's a there's an idea uh the uh these years later uh make a video of you like learning those songs on that, <laughs> that oh, i'm like a, I'm, I'm like a five-year-old i'm like a five-year-old with it oh, and it's man. weird it, 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 it's 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 weird because um because yeah, i do go once a week for lessons um and you know I, it's just like bits and you know, that I'm trying to learn and piece together and, um, you know, learn notes and learn like different techniques and, and, um, you know, picking styles and stuff. And with Durkada, I never, you know, consciously was aware, but I down pick everything except on like, you know, when you're, you know, you know, riding that open. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's the exception, but every, um, everything else is down picking and um, trying to learn this, you know, right. Like real music, you know, I'm trying to like alternate it, the, you know, to try to do it the proper way and I'm getting, a, you know, better with it. But when I, as soon as I flip back to Durkata, it's straight down picking even the new stuff that I'm writing. So, you know, Oh, yeah. You know, a friend had mentioned that it probably has to do with me doing vocals at the same time. That it's like, you know, they're more, there's more like a marking yeah. of like the vocal placement kind of a thing. Yeah. yeah. So um, I guess let me ask you about, you know, you said you talk, talked a little bit about, you know, uh, growing up, get listening to music around the house or on the on the drives or whatever. Uh, how did, when did you, I guess, kind of branch out on your own and start discovering, you know, stuff on your own stuff that like caught your attention? Well, I had, I had an older brother. He's um, three years older than me. So, um, and we also have the local rock radio station. So whenever we weren't like, you know, in, in the car with the parents, you know, we had our own, uh, you know, radios and you know each had our own um record players and stuff like that and we would listen to our local rock station which is um dbe wdbe so we would hear you know you know we were yeah or I, you know i was around 10 at the time if or eight you know you in those eight, if you look at it it would have to be if um going back and seeing when things were released but like black sabbath and and Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, all of that was being played, um, you know, on DVE. Um, wow. So, you, you know, we're hearing it there. And then MTV first was coming out. I don't know what year that was. We'd have to quickly look that up. But I think that was um, 80, 80, 81, 82. 
Okay, so then I was 11, 12 years old when um, my neighbors got cable and I, I actually saw MTV from the beginning, like the whole, you know. So did you see the, what was the very first video, uh, the Buggles? Did you did you see that? Yeah, one? the radio killed was was it yeah radio what was it? Video killed the radio star. It, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Actually, my first my first video I remember when we got that MTV down here was uh, uh, dancing on the ceiling by Lionel Richie. <laughs> uh, yeah, they they really um, it you know at that time it was all like the madonnas and all that but then you know they would throw in van halen and yeah. uh you know all like the, yeah it, you know and then when they got the uh headbangers ball and just kind of consolidated it to um you know that time slot where you knew you knew there was like none of the other garbage that was going to be there. That was that was cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. It's good of them to tell you, hey, we we might play stuff you might like between this hour and that hour, so you don't have to waste your time with anything. Else. Yeah, <laughs> but it's it's like you know MTV at one point like that was the that was the thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're kind of like the. The uh, only only thing, well, I mean, I remember other stuff like, was it like Friday night videos or something like that? Uh, I, I don't know, just a bunch of other shows on TV. But yeah, MTV was obviously was was huge uh, back then. It was kind of weird, you know, seeing like seeing that on TV, like yeah. as it as it's happening. Hey, everybody's yeah. everybody's talking but about was... the whole, I like I like oh. I want candy. I want candy. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, flock of seagulls. Uh, Roy mentioned flock of seagulls. Yeah, I ran. What is it? I ran. I ran so far away. Night flight. Yeah, night flight. That's right. I remember night flight too. Uh, Rock Palace. I don't know what that. I don't remember that. I don't remember that. It must either. have been a Chicago thing. I don't know. Yeah. This is why I like having. Uh, this is why I like when Scott shows up on, on in the chat because he says stuff like, "Where'd it go?" Where'd it go? Damn it. Where'd it go? Anyway, he, he said he could hear, uh, he could hear, uh, wait, oh, here it is. He could hear, hell, he could hear some rock and roller influence in Durkata. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like when he shows up. Uh, but uh, Friday Night Videos, I knew I wasn't the only one that remembered that. Thank you, Tom. Tom and I are around the same age, so. He kind of remembers that. All right, Are so, we all around the same age? Uh, I guess, yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, not 20. So, Wait, what year were you born? I was, I'm seven. I was, I'm, I was born in 75. Oh, yeah. So you are younger. Yeah, just a little bit. But uh, anyhow, uh, so moving right along, um, getting, uh, Let's talk about getting getting Derkata getting Derkata going. Kind of what memories do you have of of uh, you know putting the band together and like the early days, early stages, and you know uh, what what memories do you have of that? Yeah, um, like I started writing songs, and at that time I was getting into thrash. So you know, like Black Sabbath, and you know. Like in Ozzy, you know, with Randy Rhodes, with the, you know, Mr. Crawley and Diary of a Madman. I mean, they were just so, they were dark songs, you know. And, oh, yeah. um, you, you know, I it, it, everything to me was like a stepping stone. Well, I think it was all of us. A stepping stone to like getting attracted into all of that. It just sounded so wicked. And, um, and wanted to, um, y y you know write like that you know so I, I started just you know writing my own stuff and at that time it was uh uh like the song you played as the intro that was like supposed to be like our like a thrash song you know because i was listening to a lot of underground thrash bands at the time before you know i got introduced into like death metal and doom metal and all that kind of stuff um but i met terry 
at a party, uh, Ted Williams from the band Dream Death, he was the original bassist. He, he, he had like the party house. So every weekend um, we would go um, down to Ides Records, um, do a quick record run, you know, shopping, and then we'd go over to uh, Ted's. And it was just like where a bunch of metalheads would meet up and um, people would play whatever they got in, um, demos and all this. And that's where we got, where I got exposed to a lot of stuff like candle mass and stuff. And, um, and um, it was at a party there where I met Terry. And um, I mean, I seen her around at shows, um, but you know, we've, we've never spoken and um, it just happened to be, you know, we were just hanging out in the same hallway uh, with Don Crotsley from Nunslaughter. And I just casually mentioned that I, you know, been writing songs and I want to form a band. And she said, yeah, me too. But at that time she wanted to be a, a vocalist. So, you know, she didn't know, like I would, like I was already like into the death metal, you know, thing. And, um, and she was too, but she didn't know that I wanted death metal vocals. So, um, you know, we swapped numbers and I went to her house. I was like, well, let me hear her vocals. And she started singing like Fate's Warning. And I was like, well, no, that's not how, <laughs> you know, what I'm looking for. And I said, is there um, an instrument that you always wanted to play? Because we were, you know, we became friends and I wanted to be in a band with her. And, um, and she said, drums. I said, okay. So we went um, with Jeff Cherup, who used to be in a band, Doom Watch, now Submachine. Um, we went to their practice place. Um, this was 1988, you know, when we were like, you know, still in high school and stuff like that. And uh, Jeff, um, you know, kind of taught Terry the basics on how to play drums. And he's also the one um, that, uh, he was playing a death song and he recorded my vocals and I think it was pull the plug and um, he recorded it on a cassette. And um, like, I was surprised that, you know, cause I, ne I never tried my vocals out at, you know, prior to that moment. Like I wasn't going to be like, like in my room feeling stupid, you know, trying to, to sing or anything like that. So that was literally the first time that I ever did death metal vocals and um, yeah, he recorded it on a cassette and, you know, I'm like, that was me. And he's like, yeah, it's just a plain old cassette. And I'm like, well, I guess I got the job then, <laughs> you know, and cause I only wanted to be the guitarist and songwriter type of thing. Mm -hmm. And so that's how it all became, um, you know, just me and Terry. And then, um, you know, she was getting more familiar with playing the drums. I was getting more familiar with, you know, playing guitar and writing and getting things done. And then uh, eventually is when we started to, to look for other members. So you never uh, grabbed your like uh, hairbrush and like practice vocals like into the hairbrush? No, the only weird thing that I did um, was I, I originally wanted to be a drummer and it was all because of Neil Peart and yeah. it was, and it was the song Tom Sawyer, obviously. And what I did is I took a bunch of paper plates and I put pencils in yeah. to hold up. Yeah. And um and I would had like a little drum set on my floor, paper plates, and I was trying to imitate uh, Neil Peart, which obviously, yeah. You know, that's that's uh I mean you would but think that's, you, you think it would start out with something a little easier than, than well, Tom Sawyer. Just, it, it it just we like hearing that on the radio like Tom Sawyer for the first time we're like oh my god and then like yeah. that drum solo and the and the it's just it was so inspiring and so I'm like that's what I want to do and play drums and then um you know then the you know that was it that was like the only weird thing that I ever did and it was probably like just that weekend um of me doing that that um you know I kind of was like I Think guitar would be you know well i mean easy, uh, easy, easier in, in other words tom sawyer is probably the most air drum song of all time too so uh, <laughs> you know who has it on paper plates hooked together, <laughs> hooked together with pencils <laughs> all right so uh something i started doing on the episode with scott is playing little clips of 
of, of, pre, of stuff you've, uh, you know, you've recorded. Uh, so I'm going to start out way back on, uh, since we're kind of in this era now, uh, just kind of what you remember about this and what are your thoughts on it all these years later. So let's start off with this one. an actual like the 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 cover of that um oh i just took it off i just took that yeah because that's not that's not our our real cover so <laughs> you know i was thinking cover. that maybe they it. they reversed it but there's a blue marker over it so that that's like someone doing one of those their replica things yeah, yeah, yeah. that they do but what do i think of that <laughs> um kim august had flown in um, at that time, uh, you know, all of our friends were trying to find us members and it was actually Don Crotsley who was going to fill in for us. Cause we, we were asked to play that day of death show, that original one. And, um, so we were trying to get members together for that. And Don Crotsley was gonna, you know, play bass, um, uh, for the show. And then he got the idea. He was like, you know, I know I met this girl, Mary, you know, and she goes to pit for bass and, you know, she's into like thrash metal and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, death metal's not that far off, you know? Uh, yeah. And, um, and he, he was, and he was the one that kind of was like, I, I think that you guys should try to do this, you know, like if you have enough, you know, like keep it a girl band and me and Terry didn't care. So uh, we're like, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll meet her. And, um, and so that's kind of like how different things started happening. Now with Kim, it was Ross from Immolation that did the hookup and the introduction from there. And she flew in, uh, we recorded, um, you know, Jason from the band uh, Icarus Witch, um, Jason Myers, it was in his basement his parents' basement, and um, he, he just had a four track or whatever, but we uh, weren't well rehearsed. Um, Kim didn't, I don't, she didn't uh, rehearse very much before she came in, so we're, we're all over the place, like the timing and all of that, and, uh, but yeah, we just wanted to, um, you know, because we actually were, you know, formed in 88 and um, but, you know, learning instruments and writing songs and everything, we really wanted to get just something out there. Um, and so we did this rehearsal demo, just the two songs, just to start kind of, you know, getting into the, uh, the mix of things. And um, I hate that. Uh, that is, that is uh, my second worst recording that i hate <laughs> wow yeah <laughs> i think I, I think i know which one's the first one but yeah anyway yeah uh, everybody uh, knows which is the, my my number one hated it has nothing to do with the studio people it, it's our performance and the 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 my number one hated is is um the tempo and an effect um a reverb over my vocals that i don't like like now when i do vocals there's 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 no, uh, you know, anything over them. Um, I don't. I don't like any weird effects. I mean, that, I, I'd have to agree with the the, the 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 sound is it's it's actually a heavy sound you captured on that uh, on that rehearsal. As far as like, uh, you know, the, the 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 sheer like heaviness of it. 
So yeah, I, I mean, there's that. It's just we we just weren't on time with each other. Like if <laughs> if you if you listen to like the the whole thing, right. like I'm I've 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 stopped. Terry's still going. Kim, she she's you know what I mean. Like it, we're just not on time. And like I said, if we if we would have been more well rehearsed, um, yeah. but it was like she came in on a weekend and we had to do all of this stuff. There just wasn't a lot of time. Um, you know, and I thought that um, we would wing it type of a thing. And then it was like, you know, we did, we did the best we could. You yeah. Know. But one of, one of your favorite bands that you actually covered uh, a simple tour early on was way off time. Also. Yeah. That, 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 that makes me, that, that makes me feel good. Cause that, that is, they're, and they're one of my favorites that, that <laughs> uh, morbid, uh, morbid visions is one of my favorites so I, I I don't mind it's you know but that's them that's like you know, like I don't mind them but for me I'm like you know? uh, Roy has a question uh, do you remember the tuning on that rehearsal like I imagine it would be the B tuning there was a a time um, in between like later than that um, uh, you know I. You know, now that I think about it, I don't know if we had a proper tuner at the time because that was that that was the thing with everybody back then. Everyone's down tuning because we didn't have a tuner. Um, I know there were some recordings I did it that ended up being C instead of B. I thought it was B. I didn't have a tuner and I was just trying to use my ears and um, that failed. <laughs> well, you can but, uh, um, uh, incorporate the uh, cyanide uh, just. Uh, 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 oh yeah, the, when, when they got the Record an A on the on the CD and just play and it. And then over. they play it over the loudspeaker. <laughs> it works. It works. It works. I mean, those guys, like I tell everybody, those three guys make uh, make the heaviest sounds ever. You know, just three. Well, guys, I but. I know, like Jeff from Carcass always um, claims to, to, that they were the ones that down tuned, and I I don't think that was the case because a yeah. lot of bands um you know didn't have tuners and stuff and everyone i mean black sabbath I mean, they were tuning down um yeah already y you know and yeah. uh <laughs> <the district. laughs> um you know like black sabbath were already down tuning some you know so it was yeah i i think it was just kind of like a something that happened and um you know i one time i took my strings off and thought i you know knew what i was doing and when i put them back on you know i i i knew how to tune per you know to each string like i knew that much but yeah. you know i didn't know like the sound of an e so right, right. you know that. yeah so it, it, it kind of just was like mm, you know, figuring it out. And I know whenever I zoned in on B, B sounds perfect to me. So, um, but yeah, but I know all of our tunings are, are around there somewhere because we didn't have a tuner. And yeah, with actually, and I, I take it back. I did have a tuner, but it didn't, it didn't go down that low. Like it was like, <laughs> a, you know what I mean? Like a, it would light up and it, it just didn't register that like low. It would it would show like a question mark like are you sure? You go this <laughs> yeah, it's it like a little triangle. Did it you know had like the yeah. lights that light, up, but it wasn't like a, a sophisticated tuner. Well, that's a good question for the people in the chat. Who was uh, who tuned? Uh, who was one of the first ones to tune down? Or if anybody can maybe pinpoint because you know every, at this day and age everybody knows everything so. Uh, let us know what your, what your opinion is on uh, who do you well, think? You're the one that I think you told me that uh, Sepultura, uh, they tuned it standard, right? Aren't you the one that told me that? Uh, Sepultura, I think, well, I mean, they weren't tuned at all, so <laughs> yeah, they were out of tune. But, but so, were they intending to be at E? Uh, Blue I, Cheer, I, I, Blue what Cheer, did they Royce, tune to? They, he, Roy says they tune low, I don't know. Yeah. So, but yeah, Sabbath. Sabbath for sure. I think so. 
and uh, this smart ass posers had posers had uh, Iron Butterfly. <laughs> yeah, you know, Iron Butterfly was tuned kind of low. I mean, I'm not. There's a band, uh, Iron. Um, oh shit! I got I got their album. It's not Iron Cross. Iron. They're from England. I got I got a. The guys on my Facebook, Alex. Oh, uh, Iron Claw. Iron Claw. They sound like Sabbath. I think they tuned down. Oh, there's that. Uh, was that Jap What's that Japanese uh, uh, Sabbath? I'm sure it, it's actually really good. Uh, fuck, what were they called? Somebody, somebody in the chat, tell me. Uh, what was that Japanese band that sounded ex uh, exactly uh, exactly like Black Sabbath? I can't remember offhand. Uh, oh, Flower Traveling Band. You ever heard them? No. Yeah, yeah. It's like 70s. 70s, like uh, heavy shit. That's it. Flower Traveling Band. Heavy as hell. Yeah. It's like really, really Sabbath uh, sounding. And it was around the same time, too, which is kind of weird. So, um, Iron Yeah, Monkey, like I, I, Iron uh, Claw, I got to check them out. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyhow. All right. So, let's, uh, let me show you. Let me uh, appreciate you sending some of these photos. So, I guess this is around the, the right timeline we're at now. So, kind of tell us what's going on here in this photo. Yeah, this was obviously a Emulation and Revenant show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, we were, I, I guess, selling their stuff for them. But you can see we have our demos there that we were selling as well. So, um, I, Wait, was I, that I the don't. One with, uh, was that the one with uh, Morbid Angel? I don't Morbid know. Angel, Emulation and Revenant. I don't remember. I'm sure Roy, Roy, was that it? Was that the emulation, uh, Morbid Angel, like at streets or whatever? No, this wouldn't be at streets. I think this was a here in Pittsburgh. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, and do you know, uh, you know, with all the white shirts that everyone had back then, um, yeah. cause of the, it was all cost effective. Um, black shirts cost a lot and, so everyone was printing because no one had the money. So everyone was printing on white shirts. Yeah. So if you if you had a uh, black shirts back then, you were rich. Yeah. <laughs> and we uh, used to Terry and I used to um, <laughs> uh, Terry and I used to uh, make our own shirts. Like we had our white shirts, and we would paint the yeah. logo on, and it was the original logo the one that Mark Mastro originally made and we would sit up and um, yeah, just start painting our own shirts. And we, we gave them a, those ones away. Like they were to our friends. In fact, like King Fowley, um, he gave, he had one and he gave it back to me. Like, you know, I don't know, maybe 10 or so years ago. Cause he was like saying like this, like is does not fit me anymore. And um, he's like, you might as well have it back. So um, you know, so I have that, but, um, but yeah, we used to hand paint our shirts. Hell yeah. That's cool. I think I did that. I did that before. Um, all right. So, uh, Joe, Joe says that it may have been the sh that show with uh, Akron. I don't know. That show. With maybe. Emulation. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Joe, yeah. Joe remembers everything. So yeah, you, you're probably right. <laughs> Joe. Uh, speaking of Joe, since he's in the chat, man, everybody check out the episode I did with Joe. It's like no, oh. he, he 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 unleashed too much info. <laughs> he, uh, I was watching it. I was like texting him. I was like, Shh. <laughs> he was he he told too much info. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Um, all right, so let's uh. Let's move along in the uh, in the musical uh, area. Let's go to the kind of same 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 deal on the on the first uh, rehearsal that I played. Kind of your thoughts. I love this demo, and I I feel weird saying it because it's my band, you know. But um. 
this was um, uh, in an actual studio, a yeah. basement studio. Jeff Chair, who was teaching Terry drums, um, he went to high school with him. Now, this guy has a studio near me, and I want to go re-record this um, and have a, a split vinyl with the original on one side and the new on the other. Because this, these songs have never made it to like an album. These are still just true demo songs. So um, um, I wanted to have like you know, the Holy Ground on like side A and then the Holy Ground unearthed on side B. So that's something that I want us to do, and I'd like to record back with the guy that did this. But th this was a lot of fun doing this demo, and I love the sound effects. I love like everything that we, you know, came up with and all that, and it's fun. I just learned something uh, that I've never. I, whenever I play uh, uh, music, I can act, I can actually control the volume level. So that's that's why it went down. So I'm glad. I just I just learned something new. So uh, what happened? I, I didn't I, even catch. I, at first, I could I, I, I you could barely hear you. I was like, I wonder if you could turn the volume down. And sure enough, I could turn the volume down on the music and hear listen to you better. So oh, you could even hear me anyway. So I'm just no 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 no. <laughs> no at, at first, I'm like, I got to turn this shit down. But uh, and, and it did come down. So oh, oh I probably, yeah, I probably man, I, I shouldn't not, have talked over it. I'm not gonna play the entire song, man. Come on, man. Yeah. Uh, you, but you you can actually. But the uh, intro, I, I I'm all about intros, like getting like a feel going. Like I'm yeah, but all is there, about. Is there, a, is there a time limit on them? For me, there is. Like a minute, you know. Yeah, a minute, a minute's not bad because when you're do, when you're like battery and you put two minutes of just like rumbling i mean come on <laughs> uh, but that's like bathory like blood fire death like that's one that um you got to be in the mood for like it, it you know it's such a build up um and all that but yeah but but i love like i like like bands i think bands should always start off with an intro i think there should be something like the you know like the announcement of a band you know in some way i'm all for that you know, yeah, and, yeah, uh, I, 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 I agree. I agree on intros, but sometimes they can people can get carried away in like three minute intros. Like, come on, man, it's not an intro, it's a song. Yeah, at that know? point. Uh, is there any 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 uh chance of this happening? The vinyl version of the uh, Roy for like speak up, Roy, because you've been talking about this for uh -oh. over 10 years. Uh oh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Put them on the spot. I don't know what's up with the, uh, you know, what's up with it. The vinyl I version. Think that, yeah. There you go. Wait, wait, to, wait till he chime, chimes in. He said, let's go. Let's go. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> you're totally saying it like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like you've been waiting on me, you know. But yeah, yeah it's like we talked about it. God, it had to be 15 years ago. <gasps> if, wow. Yeah, like it was shortly after, and then Hell's Headbangers said they wanted to do, and I asked Roy for this stuff, and he got he shit a brick, he's because <laughs> he wanted to do it. I'm like, well, I never knew you. Never told me you wanted to do it. Uh -oh. Let's uh -oh. do it, Roy. That's, that's Scott Carroll just starting up trouble. Yeah. Boy, <laughs> well, we should we should have that on album. We should you have that. Talk to him. Um. But yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> all right, let's 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 go through some of these photos. Uh, I'm 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 gonna be careful on which ones I I, I pick. I've already shown. Uh, trying to kind of go back a little bit. Oh, here's one that seems kind of from. This is a cool photo from. I guess uh, from a while back. What's going on here? Yeah, that was at the Michigan Death Fest. We just attended. Um, and the guy in the is a Soundgarden shirt. He's actually from France. Oh, really? Yeah, that was either it's either Laurent Merle or um, the other guy. 
Oh, that that's le- that's le- uh, from Peer Drop or whatever. Peer Drop, yeah. It's it, I don't know if if that's him or if it's um, another guy that we used to talk to. Um, but he's he was from France. Yeah, and, I'm to, uh, uh, what's the guy? Uh, 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 damn, it, I'm trying to remember. Well, some of these old guys in here will let us know in, in the chat. Uh, I, think we I had I had it wrong. I know uh, in uh, the um, original um, Brian Pattison's Glorious Times, I had the wrong. Yeah, yeah, Royce, Royce yeah. That's... that's. But okay, so that is Laurent. That's what Roy said. Okay, because there was in the book, I there was another one, um, and I, I I said I got the names mixed up, and then. Um, and then someone pointed it out. And so when Brian did the reissue of his book, um, he fixed it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's but, cool. Yeah. That's a cool photo. Uh, uh, Will down there. On his- yeah. And that's Brian from Ex Mortis. That was my first husband. Oh, Brian, uh, w- w- working or working. Or yeah. Whatever. Working. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. From Ex Mortis. They were supposed to play that show and then that's when his band just completely disbanded it was like you know uh uh what's his name the the guitarist which i think he might have passed away but he was yeah he he was like an alcoholic and stuff so they were having you know issues with him and i think um moved at that time he was moving to florida and then antar was moving to florida as well and so it was just Brian and, and uh, the um, bassist, Chris Weiser or something. Yeah. But him and his girlfriend, they used to practice like at their place. They were moving like more towards the beach. So they were losing their rehearsal space anyway. So there was like all this stuff that was going on and they were supposed to play that show. And then it just, you know, I, I think Brian said it was like something like he was like, waiting at his driveway for people to show up and no one was showing up. And so hmm. like their names on like the, the shirts and everything, but they didn't actually play. So it was, um, you know, like a weird thing. And somehow that Chris Weiser blames me about it or something, you know, I don't know. Well, the Zex Mortis demo pretty damn good. I thought. Immortalities and yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then that, that seven is that uh, Joe released. Uh, fade from reality. Yeah, I think that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, it was a good, good, good guitarist. Yeah. Well, here's here's I can tie two shows in together. Uh, two shows together with this photo. When was this? What's going on here? That was in uh, a basement where we. Um, rehearse that was the Dorcada rehearsal room after we, we originally rehearsed in my parents basement um and but they were you know just getting sick of it so um i think it was we just had like a small party or something and uh Roger war showed up and um yeah i don't i don't know i mean and weber that, were probably talking is, is that your uh amp that that was actually Brian from Ex Mortis's amp. I was using his. I only owned like the small, um, my little little Dean Markley, which I still, you know, own, and that's what I do a lot of writing on. Yeah. So I was using his um, for rehearsals because because um, Brian after Ex Mortis broke up, you know, he moved to Pittsburgh, and um, and we eventually got married. Uh, I gotta ask why is it why is it covered up in plastic? um dust you know it's like we, <laughs> okay, okay. you know we might be that might be what's happening right there is we're taking the covers off you know and you can see behind chris is the original drummer of uh roger War. Oh, that's, that's nick big? yeah it's nick oh, wow. back there cool yeah i can see that yeah. now but yeah so that was like a painting and you can see those steep stairs like oh, yeah. carrying equipment down there, but yeah, that was like in a like a not so great area. Did, um, you ever, did anybody ever fall going up those stairs? Jesus, that's, uh, that's not that I know of. Um, it was Mary, um, uh, because she she had recently joined the band and she knew the um, 
like the two girls that rented that place and they let us rehearse in their basement. <laughs> so. Oh shit, hold on. I'm not, um, <laughs> fucking Scott. I'm sorry. I can see it. What did like, Scott, what's Scott I, say? I, 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 can look at, I can see all the comments like when they come out and yeah, I don't see them until you show. <laughs> you actually can if you put if you if you uh, if you if you look on the top top I mean, right, you can see all the comments. Oh, because uh, right now it says private chat. So if I go, comments, yeah, no. Oh, uh, there's comments. comments. Okay. There you go. He said, it "Looks like looks a like Polish. a Polish grandma took care of." That. <laughs> <laughs> That's how uh, growing up in the '70s, we had we had that same shit on the couches and stuff. Not my parents' house, but most people. But yeah. You did you guys uh, did uh, X Mortis and Roger War practice in the same spot? No. Okay. Oh, no. Uh, uh, X Mortis um, ended up. Uh, Brian found members here, but that was after we had split up, and so he had. Um, I guess it was at his, I, uh, you know, new place or, or one of the other members' place. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, Rochevor lived like an hour from oh, here. Sure. They still live. They yeah. They they live like an hour from where we're at. So all right. So let's get into let's get into that. Speaking of other other bands in that area, I mean, yeah, Rochevor, what Chaotic Play, Hideous Manglis, uh, uh, Prime Evil, right? Uh, yeah, no, Prime Evil was New York. That's New York. Yeah, New York. Uh, they they no, they used to play. Uh, out our way though. Uh, what, what do you remember about those the early like days of the like Pittsburgh bands getting together and all that? Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, we all started um, meeting at like shows at the Electric Banana, so um, that was kind of like our CBGB's kind of venue. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's where like I met Mark and you know just. Every everyone, you know, you have to you have to remember, like at that time, like we were all teenagers, yeah. so you, you know, and it, you know, there wasn't a lot of us, so it, it was it was a, um, you know, it was cool meeting people. Everyone got along. I mean, obviously, if you're going to death death metal, it's not like how it is now, because now it's like you know, a ton of people are in, into it. Back then there wasn't. So it was, um, cool that you knew if someone was there, like they, they just automatically, you know, you were going to be friends with them, you know? So yeah, it, it, it was, it was cool. I mean, that was, that was the highlight is that when there was a, like a, a death metal band that was going to the banana, the, the hardcore and punk bands, it was like, you know, that could be sketchy because some of the, some of the the skinheads they didn't like the long hairs they called us the long hairs and so <laughs> you know those um you know we, we had uh um we were friends with a lot of the, the punk bands because like dream death like would would play with um you know like the the punk bands and stuff like doom watch and and uh half-life and stuff like that um but there were like, um, like the, like the, I don't know if they were Nazi skinheads or, but you know what I mean? Like the actual skinheads, like yeah, they yeah. were, they were a bit, uh, um, they were, they were like the baddies. <laughs> so was dream death was dream death. Like the first, like, I guess, local band that, that, that you, I guess maybe discovered as far as extreme music or, or was it somebody else? Um, they would be, they would be one of the first. I mean, they were, I mean, there was Necropolis, Bird of Prey, um, later Eviction. Um, but yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe it was Dream Death that, um, was like the first local. It's hard to, you know, remember, you know, I would, I mean, you know what I mean? Because it's like yeah, at the time it was just you're going to a show or something. But yeah, it, it could have well been them. Or Doom Watch. Yeah, Doom Watch. Yeah. 
you know, I'm just repeating. I'm just repeating what people are saying. That's yeah, Doom Watch. Like Jeff Jeff from Doom Watch is the one that uh, he he got. He came up with the name Derkada because he was reading the Conan series, and um, he stopped over at Terry's when we had our list of band names, and uh, you know it was, <laughs> you know it was um, impossible then to come up with something original, you know, because everybody was you know already kind of, you know, using like either, um, you know, the morbids, this and, yeah. um, death, this dark, this, and, you know, and now like we're into phrases, people's <laughs> band names are phrases, you know what I mean? So, so when, when Jeff came, he was like, you know, and kind of started telling us about Dracada, you know, that, that, you know, she was the leader of a blood drinking cult, you know, and like she would lure men into the, like the lair or whatever. And, you know, and, and we're like, oh, that's, that's pretty, you know, wild. And he was like, you know, you figure female death, like it all kind of like ties in and that's how, um, that's how it came about. Yeah. Well, at least you didn't go with like a shun, like T I O N or something. You know, like a lot of bands were doing back then. Oh, oh the, the shun bit, like emulation. <laughs> emulation, <Yeah, yeah. laughs> <laughs> suffocation. There was a lot of that going on. Now, I can but, tell you what we were going to do. And as Jeff Chair laughs his ass off, but this uh -oh. isn't like politically correct. But at the time, we didn't know. So you have to, you, you have to think of that. But we were, you know, really in the autopsy. Yeah. And so we were trying to do a play off of autopsy. And so we were like autism and we didn't know what autism meant. You know, we just thought it was like, we made up a word and Mark's like, or not Mark, uh, Jeff was like, I don't know if you want to call yourselves autism. <laughs> <laughs> and he could have explained, you know, what it meant. And, um, got <laughs> care. <laughs> and um and so we're like yeah i guess that's not a good you know <laughs> death metal yeah, band you know. I, it's probably being used like a lot right now though Der Dercada imagine. means goddess of death someone goddess of death oh yeah yeah she was she was the goddess of death um i think dagon was her husband or something like it's all part of like that stygian mythology yeah um but yeah, yeah. Dagon is in the band. Um, fuck. I was trying to make a joke and I can't remember the guy's name. Fuck. Mm. Uh, uh, Inquisition. Like I, yeah, like I don't know any of these people. And I, I know there's uh, another female band. I think it starts with an A, like Astria or something. I don't know. But but they have like stage names and the one person's name is like Dracada. Like I've seen what? that. Yeah. So, you know, but I don't know these people. I've never talked to them or anything like that, but it, I, 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 it's like weird um, seeing that. There you go. See, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. So, do you, oh, so there actually was a band called autism. Were they hardcore though? Yeah. I don't Cause know. it sounds like that would be like a hardcore, hardcore band. Speaking of hardcore, yeah. I was watching a video doing, you know, doing my, my homework uh, of you and, uh, <laughs> You and uh, Mary, uh, you you both brought up. I think you're talking about Chicago bands or something like that. And you know, you may have mentioned like Cyanide and Cardiac Arrest or whatever. But uh, you you both got excited when I, I think Negative Approach was playing that same day. You were being yeah, there. oh yeah, yeah. That's one know, of my all time favorite fucking that. So speak a little bit of. I mean, uh, so you got into the the old hardcore stuff too, huh? Well, lot, Pittsburgh is, is cross like that. Like, you, you know, like when you go to a Pittsburgh show, it, it's like all blended. It's not like the same, um, like in other cities or whatever. So, y you know, it's kind of like metal is metal. Um, yeah. So, you know, we grew up with, y you know, um, there was plenty of punk and hardcore and all that and you just kind of get used to it like with dri and all that you know you kind of that it's all part of like the the whole growing up in the underground um yeah. and um you know the exploited the the accused you know and you know just going for the extreme of the extreme yeah. you know um 
but Mary turned me on to negative approach. Man. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're just fucking like, like they're, they're like a punch in the face. Like every song, it's like a punch in the face, isn't it? Uh, uh, absolutely. And even if you see them, if you see them play live to this day, they are just I've seen them like, brutal. Like, yeah, like, a couple. I've seen him a couple times already. Yeah, it's like it's every song's like a punch in the face. John Brandon's and, vocals sound like he's like gargling like like razor blades or something like that. Yeah, ah, yeah, know. and he looks like uh, he looks mean. <laughs> yeah, but he looks like that actor um, that was in Twin Peaks. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, he uh, that that he actor was, also he uh, was in, in Sex in the City. Uh, um, what is his name? McCallan something or I guess. But yeah, they're, 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 uh, yeah. I got, so it's I like, it's just like funny because like when I see him, like I, I picture that actor, like <laughs> just being like, in, like in the, so pissed off. I mean, he's so pissed off on stage yes. and, uh, <laughs> it's they're, they rule. I, I've, I've, uh, I've, uh, I've seen them, uh, uh, we actually, one of, one of my bands played with him a couple of times and they're just, they're just fucking amazing, man. It's just, it's just like I tell, I tell, I said, dude, they're they're more brutal than like, fucking like, so many death metal bands or whatever black metal bands. They're just so extreme and over the top. And they were doing that shit in like eighty, eighty one, you know. So yeah, it's just, just like I said, I had to bring that up because I was like, fuck yeah, negative approach. Yeah. So, uh, but anyhow. Oh uh, yeah, Scott. He's got the his other band, Easy Action. It's more like it's, it's just more like rock and roll. Are you familiar with the, the vocalist John Brandon? He's got another band called Easy Action. That's uh, no, I'm not uh, familiar at all. It's kind of like uh, it's more like rock. Kind of like uh, I don't know. Being from Detroit, it's you know. Yeah, Cal McLaughlin. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys see it? Tom and uh, Joe, the actor that. Uh, oh, there you go. I knew somebody would know. I knew somebody would know. Yeah, Tommy. he looks. He looks like him. It, it, it uh, not Alec Baldwin. Jesus. Alec Baldwin. <laughs> Dude, he's busy. He's too busy. Uh, never mind. Shooting Dude. people. I'll say it. But uh, that was but yeah, hell yeah. I felt bad for him. But. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, so let's. Uh, yeah, thanks, Iris. This is, is kind of like kind of what I try to do. Not like a, not like a fucking like. So uh, you know. None of that shit. So let's listen to your favorite release of all time. Uh, uh -huh. I, think I, I think I have it in here somewhere. Yeah, I do. So this is going to be the not favorite. Yeah, <laughs> I think. Uh. That artwork is sick. Artwork is sick. That's. Vocals are just so bad, Is but the, the very all the, all the reverb that you said you didn't like. Yeah, it was the reverb and and um, I think it's reverb anyway. Um, but I, I I sound um like hollow, like I'm singing in something hollow and and um like a whale or something. Oh. I don't know, like I've been it's like standing in a whale doing death metal vocals and um. Well, but, you may not be. But aware that, of that uh, the uh, that little uh, on the song um, "Eternal Misery." Uh, yeah. um, I don't know why I said misery that way. <laughs> Eternal misery. <laughs> but uh, um, the very first lead that I did was on that, and um, Jeff Cherp was there, kind of coaxing me. He was like, you know, just kind of you know, do something like, you know, with your, you know, tremolo bar and you know, bring it down, you know? So I kind of 
recorded yeah. it, you know, like I did something and then we're like, okay, we'll keep it, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, what's I mean, it's very remedial. So it's like, you know, if there's any like real guitarists on here, I mean, calm down, you know? <laughs> nah, yeah, 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 yeah. No, but I don't think there are. are. Ah. Everybody, everybody, <laughs> likes, everybody likes the vocals. So, uh, but actually, I don't know if you're aware of this or not. There's like a lot of newer, like death metal bands. There's been like a resurgence of like younger play, kids playing death metal. And I would say like 98 out of 100 of those bands, their vocals are like that. Like a the, shitload the bad, of reverb. The, yeah, the bad vocals. Uh, yeah, like, like oh. Yeah, there's a lot this of is, that. This, this, is, this is where uh, I, I cannot stand. I, I, I cannot stand like the, 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 the monotone barking vocals were what the what happened this isn't what we started out to do i mean you, you make it legible there, there are so many like i i uh god i don't I, like i feel bad because i'm like cutting on people but oh my god i i can't even even if the music is good i i can't listen to it, it it's <laughs> it's it's so awful but people were thinking like if they if, if they sound like a robot or something like they don't sound human that that that's heavy or something and maybe to some people it is because some a lot of you know i don't know it ain't for me though well they said uh yeah it's it's basically cookie cutter stuff you know hey uh i don't um, even know if it's cookie it's way past cookie monster some of the no, stuff no, no, I'm, I'm, here. Not, I'm saying i'm saying cookie cutter like it's all the same exact everyone sounds exactly the same yeah yeah they think that that's the uh <laughs> like the formula for it or whatever it is like go back i mean listen to fucking bolt thrower you know like mm -hmm. autopsy and everyone's trying to be so extreme with yeah. everything that it's just stop <laughs> listen up kids you're not gonna out will romer will romer okay oh Break yeah <laughs> you can't you can't redo something that's been done and um oh, no, they, they can and they're doing it <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, and a lot of um, trust me. There's a lot of bands that 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 that's what they sound like. A lot, just just like basically like I don't. know. Anyway, like doing the real vocals though, but yeah, not the. Yeah, yeah. You got you gotta have you gotta have uh, you gotta have your own your own style your own. Yeah, you definitely. That, that's where you gotta be an individual instead of. You know, like one of the biggest compliments that I've had, and I've had this from a certain couple people, is if Durkada is playing, you know, or whatever, like, that's Durkada. Like, you know what I mean? Right, right, so right. So that, you know, like even if you don't like the band or whatever, it's it's, it's le at least that it's, um, you know, people know that if, if you know, if, it, if it's on, it's us. So I'm like, okay, that's that's cool. You know, but there's so many bands. I don't know who they are. You know, like Bolt Thrower. Bolt Thrower. I you put the, them on, you know, you know it's oh, yeah, Bolt Thrower. Of course, of course. Um, that's like the greatest band ever. Uh, so, uh, so that seven inch was put out on the now infamous Seraphic Decay. Uh, did you deal with Steve on that, or how? how did yeah, that work out? yeah. I, I I did and Steve um, was cool and I think um, you know I okay obviously we had a deal and the only thing that I wanted with that was uh, black vinyl or uh, that clear lavender purple because to me that color purple looks cold to me like um you know like it it just looks cold and that's what i was like i'm real into like everything as far as like the sound the visual everything except the right. sound on that but but anyway like but that was the vinyl that that i wanted and that was the only vinyl that that i wanted to do and then next thing you know it's like um you know john mckenty or mckenty um you know, called up Terry and said, Hey, there's, you know, we're finding out that Steve is pressing more than what he had told us all. Yeah. And, and 
that started all kinds of a, a, a fuss. Like he went there with someone and was like actually knocking on his door and Steve was like hiding under his bed. What? But Steve was also like friends with um, uh, like Jim Kanye and all that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, it, it just, you know, Terry ended up calling Steve and said, send me back our dat tape um and but he already had it you know what i mean they already had the the vinyl plate so it didn't matter you know that he was yeah. going to send it back but we you yeah. know he sent it back but on the he sent it back to me and he bitched me out like on the the box and um that's what roy can't find i keep uh of like roy needs to do some more uh spring cleaning because I, I want you to. <laughs> was that you, Roy, that went to his house with we with? I think it went with John. John. Yeah, he went with John, I believe. Yeah, like I was like, yeah, that was like our first uh, exposure to being ripped off. But he, and you know, but so through the years, I keep seeing these different colors, and it's not just like I see the blues, the reds, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, you yeah. know. But then I was seeing the different colors of the the cover. So there's all kinds of like different things going on. And I thought it was like just down to like, okay, so he made some red and blue. Oh, there was also a, uh, a splatter, um, like a, it was white splatter and a, like bubble gum. And I said, no, don't, don't do that. Like, you know, it, it just looks too dumb. Like it, you know, but he, but I know he did make those because he wanted us to check it out. Um, but but then that happened like to when Terry contacted because I because Terry at the time she was like the you know you know yeah. you know don't mess with her kind of thing you know, so but I was like no no let me let me yeah I'm like let me talk to him and she's like she, she was like dialing on the phone and all this and I was like oh shit here we go so I knew she was gonna like you know tell him off good and um <laughs> and so that was that and then we never had any other contact and you know someone is still pressing this and it's it, it like it's it's still going on and on and they've changed like the back of it now has has devil so the thing is it's, it's not a bootleg like that's the difference like boot I, I like bootlegs. I, I admit it. Like, you know, I own some bootlegs and stuff. Like I love like live bootlegs and shit. Yeah. Um, but somebody in, and I know within the scene and I'm not going to call people out cause it'll get me in a lot of trouble and I don't, I don't want to go there, <laughs> but there are people that are replicating things and selling them as, if, mm -hmm. as if they were, from back in the day. I mean, it's the, you know, there's the capability to do that now with, with, you know, with technology and Photoshop and all oh, that yeah. kind of stuff. So um, that's why I get, I go off on rants because I see, I see it happen with our demo. Like I know the tapes we use with the demo. I know like everything that we, you know, how it was done because we made them ourselves and, yeah. you know, someone is selling, you know, our demos um and they're not selling them for like the five bucks or whatever they're selling them for a ridiculous amount i'm like that's not even an original demo they went out so so here i mean if you have, if, you, if you guys want to like earn some extra cash this is what you do you know just go out buy some cassettes ca you know, carbon copy uh, a demo put it up on ebay or wherever they're you know this happens is, and act like it's an original demo sell something for like 200 bucks you know get the uh, original Nihilus demo, you know, it, it's like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. you know what I mean? So, so it's like, but that's what's happening to us. And I know what's happening to other people. Yeah. And, and it's, it, it, it's just, it's not the, if it's the original, it's the original, but when it's not the original, but people have caught on to, to doing that. And that's, yep. that's my, my thing. And that's why I call them replicas. They're not bootlegs, they're replicas. And, yep. you know, Another, another, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's a lot. Now lot, we have like lot. yellow, green, orange. We have all these bad colored vinyls for that stupid release. It, it, oh my God, it, it, it you know, it really, 
it, it gets me going. But that was the reason why um, I did the official release with um, the seven inches label or whatever. Oh, over. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. That, that's that's why I was like, you know, fuck it. Let's, let's just do it. Do an official one. Yeah. Well, one, one uh, I guess, not, I don't want to keep talking about your favorite record, but. <laughs> One of the one of the uh, you actually have your own John Hand. That's our John Hand. Heidi is our John Hand. <laughs> um, I mean, we uh, Vincent Crawley from Asheron met her at a party and told him that she played guitar and she was looking for a band and she was in the death metal and all that. And he was like, I know a, a girl death metal band that's actually looking for a guitarist. And we met her. We thought she was cool and everything. And it was like, like we hung out with her a couple of times. So I thought, you know, everything would work out because her personality was cool and we were having yeah. a fun time. And so we got her like, we got to, this photo shoot for the seven inch, you know, why don't you, you know, cause Terry and I were getting tired of it, just the two of us, you know? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, she got on the photo. Um, and then shortly after this is when Mary, there's even a note on there that Mary had just joined. Cause we were, we were wanting people to realize that we were now a full lineup and, yeah. um, you know, to start booking shows and, um, yeah, then, I realized that she, um, you, you can tell when someone's never touched a guitar. And at the time I, I, you know, was like, that's cool. Like we we all, we can all learn together and you know, it, no big deal. We're not in any hurry, but, um, and within her personality kind of like, wasn't gelling with me and Terry and, um, yeah. So Terry ended up kicking her out and yeah. It, it just, yeah, it's like we, it, it's, it's like she had like, like the, like the personality to get us like, kind of like, oh yeah, she's cool. And then we saw like the real her <laughs> and we're like, oh no, we, we, we don't, um, Jenny hand <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yeah, it like, it's not going to work. So Terry called her up and said, no, it ain't going to work. But then we got her on this, you know, we got our own John hand. Yeah. And it's funny, it's years later, she um, had a, a, a lawyer contact me about her share of that seven what? inch. Wow. Yeah, it was, it, you know, you, you, I was like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> you, you know, I'm like, there is no money. Oh, I just dropped the thing. I'm like, there is no money. Maybe she's the one and, doing all the, maybe she's the one doing the bootlegs. Yeah, maybe. And she's getting making out more than we are. <laughs> Damn. But uh, but yeah, she uh no that that was something weird. I guess people assume that people in death metal like have money like they make money from this. So don't that that's a no. that's like a a very uh you know incorrect yeah. you know misconception, you know. Yep. All right, here's another photo we can uh or you can discuss them. This is this is a cool photo. Yeah. What's going that on? That was here? um Robin um it uh Paul Masvidal from Cynic. Yeah. Um uh Terry was talking with Paul and he knew Robin and she was wanting to get into the band and that time Robin played guitar. So she flew up to meet us and this was supposed to be the Dracada lineup that was, you know, going to happen. Um, but um, we just uh, disbanded shortly after that. Yeah. Where's this at? Where's this taking it? This is at Terry's mom's house, mom and dad's house. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's a cool shot. What's that? I said it's a cool shot. That old... Uh, that old, those old style couches and yeah, <laughs> I, just, I, always look at, I always look at stuff around like behind the like the lamp and the, the painting on the wall. Just just uh, just interesting to go back at that in that time. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, cool, 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 cool. Uh, no plastic on the couch. No. <laughs> 
Uh, if it, it was either it was either you had plastic on the couch or you had plastic runners in front of the couch and all of that. My friend, uh, you know that that song in Death We Meet. Uh, she had the the plastic in front of the couches, and when we were kids, like we had to eat on the plastic and stuff. Um. Oh, oh yeah, I I I have to ask about. Uh... Uh, Kanye, I know you've mentioned him several times. Uh, I got to meet the guy a few times. He was always cool, always awesome. Uh, one of those guys that would just give things away just because he was that kind of guy. You know, he would always give stuff, and and uh, I'll keep talking. Hey, check out yeah, the, keep talking. Talk, I just had a, talk, talk amongst yourselves. I just had to fix my, my disabled dog, though. Uh -oh. he, he, he was swimming because he got out of his thing. But. Uh -oh. Uh, so anyway, uh, can you give us a Jim Kanye story that, that, you know, I know there's probably tons of them, but, uh, you know, give us, share something about Jim with us. Yeah, I think I mentioned this before. I don't know if it interview or not, but this one stands out to me and I, I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll always get a kick out of it. And anybody who knew Jim personally knows that um, he, he was an odd guy. He had like OCD and whatever else that could make, you, you know, like everything had to have its place in his house. And he knew if something moved like it, like at one time, like this isn't a story I wanted to tell, but but just to give you an idea, like um, he was living with Woody. I don't know if you know Woody. He used to do merch and all that. Um, but it's our friend Woody or whatever. But he was roommates with Jim at the time. Mm -hmm. And he was playing when Jim was playing drums with me. I used to go up on the weekends. And um, he had like those little football helmets that you would get like, like McDonald's Happy Meal or something. <laughs> so he had them like on his speakers, you know, like set up like for their divisions or whatever. And someone moved them and it oh, had shit. to be, had to be Woody, but he thought it was me. And, you know, and he was like, you know, like, like what's wrong with you? What kind of a person moves these? I'm like, what kind of a person has these? Like, I was like, <laughs> we used to fight. Like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm not moving your toys, you know? I'm like, but it, it was, you know, years later, I'm like, Woody, you know? And he was like, yeah, it was me, you know? So that's like, that's how Jim was. But, you know, but he was real, like, um, you know, his stuff was like his stuff. Like, you don't, you don't touch it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, um, and uh, there was this uh, slot in his dining room wall. And, um, you know, so you have to, you have to just, the, the dynamic with me and Jim, we were either like, like arguing with each other over something, just, just Jim being Jim, or oh. we were laughing. Okay. So it, it was like, it, it would flip just back and forth. So, uh, but in his dining room, he had like this like slit in the wall. And I'm like, that looks weird. Like, what, what is that? I asked them and, uh, and, uh you know, what it was was a mail slot usually they're in a door you know but this was like going into his dining room through the wall and and i'm like what is that and he says <laughs> he said something like that's my entry point for whenever i turn into a bat and he <laughs> said it like like what? so like like matter of fact and like <laughs> He was so quick with that stuff. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I was in tears the whole day because I kept my mind kept replaying it over and over and over. And uh, <laughs> that that's one of my best memories of him. Yeah, he was quick. That's for damn sure. Oh, my God. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. Um, there, I've never, ever met anybody else. Not even a little bit close to him. <laughs> you, his, you know, he he was. There's a cool photo with Jim. Yeah, that was my um, taken in my old backyard. Um, when was this? Yeah. Oof. This probably early 2000s or late late 90s. Oh, okay. Something like that. 
Yeah, that's a cool photo. Jim yes. Kanye. Yeah, so if, if anybody... That was actually after uh, Nunslaughter played uh, the night before. And um, and that's Heather, which was Dawn's then wife, Dawn from Nunslaughter. And um, she played bass on the recording Spirits in the Morgue. And um, this was like, we all just, that's the clothes we had on the night before we got up. We're like, hey, we should do a band picture. Like no one brushed their hair, obviously. And we just went straight in the backyard and took a band photo. Hell yeah. I, I think it looks cool. Myself. Yeah, but when, yeah, photos like that through the years, like I've gotten tortured, you know, um, with the online trolls on, you know, being compared to like the bands, like what, like that Eminescence and what? stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, 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 everyone's every once in a while, like Dracada will end up in like one of those, like, you know, where they're all glam, you know, and then um, it's like, you know, their Dracada photo shows up and we we're not even like showered or hairbrushed. And then people are like ripping us to shreds. It's like, Oh my God. This was this was that same time, right? Um, not the same. That was the recording I'm talking about. That was yeah. recording spirits in the morgue. Yeah. Where was this at? Beachwood Studios. Um, the uh, Jim's friend, I think his name was Beaker. Um, he worked there. So we would do like these midnight sessions. Like so, we would have to go like once, like everybody that worked during the day left, um, you know, Beaker yeah. had the keys to get in and we would go in like throughout the middle of the night and, um, and uh, record. What guitar is that? Is that the one you still use now? Yeah. That's my, that's one of my Gibsons. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, the uh, custom shop XPL explorers. Yeah. I think, I think you sent me a photo of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. pretty sure I did. Yeah, this one, right? Yep, that's the. It's my favorite, favorite guitar. I got three of them. What uh, what uh, this is like nerd stuff. But what's what's like gauge strings do you use? I use um. Oh shit, I'm not good with numbers. My my memory is awful, but they're uh. I got a set right here. They are 13 to 56. Oh, yeah. yeah These are the my favorite strings. Hold on. Like Dean Markley endorsed me because I do I do use them. I, oh, I really? Can, yes. Like I've been using these for years. Like they knock on wood, they've never broke, but they're these uh, the, uh, the cryogenic activated. So they put them through, um, you know, well. some sort of like a frozen type of thing. And uh, it really strengthens them up. But I love these strings. I, wow. I won't. I, I won't even entertain other strings. How many car guitars do you have? I have three of those Gibsons. Wow. Um, because it's always like a backup to a backup because they, they don't make them anymore. There was yeah. only either 200 or 500 made or something. It was a really low amount. They're not, they're not great guitars, but for my hand, they, they, they work well, like the neck works really well. But um, I have that. I have a seven string BC rich warlock that I never use. Um, yeah. That one I might be selling um, if I could, get myself to sell it. Um, I got a, a, a Fender. Um, uh, I got a um, an ESP that I don't like. I don't like the ESPs. I know everybody else likes them. I don't, I, I don't care too much for them. And I, and I recently um, got it off my cousin. I still have to pay him for it is this, um, this Ibanez. Um, yeah. I mean, you'll get it because I can't remember the name. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I... hey, look, it's Lori. Hey, Lori. 
that ass thing. Thanks for hanging. Thanks for uh, stopping by. I know you're busy and all that. So. I got the shirt. Look, I'm, you're still there. Shirt came in, wearing it. I can't remember the name of it, but I just got. Oh wow! This. Let me let me so. uh, do the solo. There we go. Let me get the damn. So it's um. That's cool. But yeah, so this is my the new one. Um, damn. So that's yes. So that's three, four, five, six, six, seven guitars and an acoustic. Damn. She does have a clean kitchen. <laughs> That's been it's been noted twice. Uh oh. So anyway, uh, if anybody yes, wants I have I can still hear everything. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Lori, Miss Miss Lori Bravo says hello. Hi, Lori. Yeah, she said she'd try to stop by, and there she is. So that's cool. That's cool of her to do that. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, if uh, anybody has any questions, uh, go ahead and post them now. I know I've seen some. I've seen all of them, but kind of get lost. And I'm, I'm a, I'm a one-man show here, like I said, so I gotta got to try to pay attention to everything. And uh, uh, Yes, Scott, it's a Telecaster. A Fender Telecaster? Or what is it? Yeah. Oh. Okay. But, it's, but I'm I'm told it's not a true Telecaster. Oh. I sent you a picture of that. You should have that in my room. Oh, maybe I did. I don't know. I probably you probably did. Um. Uh, all right. So let's talk about this band right here. What uh? I see. How did how did this get how did this get going? And oh, Mark. Obviously, you and Mark have known. Uh, uh, I've known each other for a long time. You ended up in a band together. Uh, talk about like how this band got going. And, and and I know you have like stuff that was never released probably, I think still. Yeah. Um, we, he just called, he just called me up one day and said that he wanted to, you, you know, start up another band and, you know, not Roger or more, but you know, similar um, and he wanted me to be, to be, to be the bass player. So I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he wrote all the stuff or did you write some of this stuff too? I didn't, I don't have any involvement with writing. I, I wanted to, but it ended up, um, being him and the other guitars. And I think even, uh, Jared, the drummer, um, he had some input to it. So I was strictly just the bass player and um that was nice like like i didn't mind that because i didn't have to worry you know it's you know it's different when you're writing when you when you have the pressures of writing something and then when you go to something we're just showing up and you, you just play what they play that's awesome you know so that was um that was a fun band and um there is unreleased material um whenever uh, we were working on it. Um, it, it was, it was just like a really, uh, strange time. Like, uh, gas, the guitarist, uh, that was uh -huh. in the, the front of the picture, he had moved like, like I think two, three hours away. So him going to rehearsal was kind of rough. My vehicle, like that was a, an hour, hour and a half to get to that rehearsal spot. And, uh, my vehicle was not doing so well. So it was kind of like petering out because, um, you know, just, we just, you know, you know, gas and I didn't have the, uh, the ability to, to, for the rehearsals. And, um, they were, Jared and Mark were still working out the songs and everything. And we kind of left it like, well, give us a call, whatever you're ready. And so it was like years later, you know, Mark's like, Hey, we're ready. We want to do this. And, um, and we said, well, send us the tab because he sent a CD and it tuned down using this as a distortion. They, we, they tuned to A or A flat. I'm yeah, like, yeah, I can't. Yeah. 
I'm like, I can't make out what that is, you know? And I said, you know, write out the tab or, or come to my house and show me it or something. And, yeah. you know, he didn't want to, uh, to do that. And, and I found out like gas said the same thing. Like I, I can't figure that out. And, um, and I guess, uh, Jared, the drummer knew other people. So then we just got replaced and, you know, you know, we weren't happy about that. Um, so, but they, so they, you know, recorded, but it's still, because Mark was so like, he wanted it done now, like blah, 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 you know, oh, and, yeah. it's, <laughs> and it's like, it's been like 10 years sitting there because he has to do the leads over it and he hasn't done it yet. And I, and I get on him all the time. I was like, you know, I'm like, that, I'm like, that really like pisses me off because you, you know, like, you know, me and gas, were kind of like, you know, pushed aside because you wanted this thing done now and we weren't able to do it like right at that moment. And then 10 years later and it's still not, you know, yeah. done. You know, he's like, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> All right. So if anybody's not familiar with Avisium, quit being a poser and check them out. Uh, heavy. Yeah, yeah, it's heavy. We're about to listen to a, a, a little bit of the song Unmarked grave uh and uh, uh let me find it here it's on that uh on the uh the ep that you guys did uh so let's check it out we did an ep Damn, Mark Maffield. Mark Maffield's vocals. Heavy. His vocals are just unreal, man. I love that band. I, I absolutely love that band. Yeah, that was uh yeah, I, I'm EP, I meant like a mini CD. It wasn't like really a full album. Oh, but. oh, the mini CD, yeah. That I think Dave Rotten did. Um, yeah, it was it's interesting because whenever Mark asked me to do the band, and it, this is true, Mark, all the way, you know, he was like, Hey, you want to play bass? Uh, uh, like, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. And he's like, Okay, we're recording next week, you know, and it's like, What, you know, so you know, he went with me, we, we went to a local record store, I think it was called Empire, um, and uh. Like, cause he checked out, there was like this Dean bass there or something. So he's like, is this perfect bass for you? Not too expensive or whatever. And, um, yeah. you know, he helped me like get all the bass equipment and, and, um, so then, uh, that like playing bass, like on talk about the fucking blisters, my God, <laughs> like, you know, so like I had to hurry up and learn cause originally it was just the three songs. And, um, and I just remember like we were popping the blisters with a pin to get me through the recording because oh, it was, yeah, it was, it was unbelievable. Like, go, like, I mean, I don't know what size the bass strings are, but you know, you get the idea, you know, that yeah, yeah. I was not prepared for, for that. You know, I thought like once my fingers were callous, they were callous, but fuck no, put a bass string on them. Ow. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that, that, that'll happen. They're a lot, they're a lot thicker. But yeah, that that uh, that uh, mini CD is just like total heaviness. It was it yeah. Was the cool. first three songs they're not recorded at the same place. Like it's like the you can tell that the sound difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are dealing with it. They did the same thing. They had different recordings on dealing with it. So uh, and uh, but yeah, that that uh, you guys 
did what like a handful of shows only, right? Yeah, we played it. We we did uh uh yeah, quite a few shows, I think, uh, more locally. Um I think the only out of state was uh New Jersey at Connections. Oh no, I'm sorry. We also played Cleveland. Um I, but I think that was it. Um, it was mainly local shows. Jared, the drummer, um, you know, was a little bit younger than us. So he was getting like uh, tips on shows uh, at these like bars. And we're like, okay, yeah, we'll play it. And it was like with new metal bands, oh. like young kid, you know, like these 15 year old new metal bands. And Jared <laughs> to him was like, hey, it's music. It's all, heavy, you know, like be good. No, we were getting booed off the stage, like not not exaggerating. I mean, it was the most uncomfortable thing, you know. And we're like, Jared, we're like, you're cut off. You cannot like <laughs> book any more shows for more us. Shows. Wow, yeah, you're playing for corn fans and shit. Yeah, it was it wow. was it was different. That's terrible. Oh. Uh oh, I gotta help. Yeah, that's my disabled doggy. Oh shit. Um. All right, I'm gonna start. Uh, still got a lot. Damn, this, there's so much to cover here. Let me uh, keep going. I can hear you. Move right along. Um, let me see. Where's the question? Let me go back to the questions so I don't forget them. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I see him. I see him. Uh, oh, uh, Aaron wanted to know about. He was asking about Jill. I guess you're you're good friends with Jill from Futurist, right? Yes. Yeah, it's uh this is my disabled dog. I had to change his diaper. <laughs> Damn. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Uh yeah, he's just curious about your uh friendship with Jill, like uh I guess is is she still doing the uh, funerals? Yeah, yeah. Um, I met Jill. God, it had early nineties. Um, she was with uh, probably like right when she first met John, or they were dating. Um, so I've known them for a while, um, and then we didn't really start to begin get become real good friends. It was years later. I don't. I don't know. It just seems like it, 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 we always were friends, but like there was a time where we started becoming really good friends. And um, um, she lives like an hour from me. So, you know, we don't see each other uh, too often, but, you know, if she's coming in towards Pittsburgh, because I live in, like more towards the city, um, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll get together or whatever. And, but, but yeah, I mean, she's totally cool. And like health wise, it's, you know, it's, it's always a concern with her. Um, but yeah, you know, they are playing Maryland death fest, oh, you wow. know? So I, you know, recommended to her that if she's not feeling, um, stable enough right. to, you know, to play bass and sing, just, get someone else to play bass and, and sit down and, and do the vocals and all that. So, you right. know, it's, you know, her health is just, you know, it, it's a shame. I'm, I, I'm one day older than Jill. Hmm. Exactly one day. So. I, I actually I was thinking about asking her to come on the show. So uh, maybe, maybe she would do it. She would do it. Yeah, yeah, she would, she would, she would have a lot of stories because she's done, um, you know, like actual tours. She probably has lots of great stories, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that's she was one of the people I've been uh, put on the list of people to ask, you know. So that'd be cool. Uh, oh, did you ever play Rhode Island? No. Way back when? No, you guys never played Rhode Island. Okay. No, that mythic did. You might be thinking that. Uh, yeah, somebody asked that. And uh, yeah, <laughs> my, 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 mythic is fighting words with me. So, Fraser wants to know what your dog's name is. Bo Scott, so total. Oh, okay, there's 
Oh, there's Scott. Scott, yeah. the, the man on the, the, the guy just he, he's, he knows everything. Um, Bo, Bo just got a wheelchair. He's uh, I've been training him with his wheelchair, so so yeah, he has trouble getting up, and um, I uh. Yeah, he needed a diaper change because he can't get up to get to, you know, he, he's old and I, he's not ready to go and I'm not ready for him to go. So, hell no. Uh, all right. So, I, I, there's a few pictures I still haven't shown, but I wanted, I saw one that I'm, I think I saw it on the Dirt Cat page. I'm like, I, I got to ask about this photo. It's like, what the hell is going on here? Who is this? <laughs> That looks like Timmy. He used to be the uh, a bartender at a, a, a club called the Smiling Moose. And the guy he's with, I can't remember his name, but he's just like an older uh, metal dude. Wow. But I, I don't know what they're, I think they're just kind of getting into it or something. Yeah, it's just a, it's a weird photo of them to get captured. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was like, yeah. I saw that. It was, I guess, it was at one of your shows. I'm like, what the yeah. hell? What is this? So I thought, I thought it was cool. I'm like, wow, look at this. This is like, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. He he's totally in 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 the metal. Like uh, he's an old metalhead. Um, it's hilarious. But yeah, I think I think they must have been just I don't know getting into it, and that the photo got them at a <laughs> awkward. You yeah, know. that's awesome. I, I, I was like, well, I, I thought it was cool. I was laughing my eyes off. I was like, what the hell? He, he, he's, he's like, looks very Nosferatu there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's get back. Uh, we'll start winding this down. But let's get back to the last uh, audio thing I was going to play. I think. Yeah. Oh, no, I got one. Uh, yeah, one more. All right. So the, 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 the album. Here we go. Uh, that was recorded what 2012 2011 yeah. that was uh what do you what do you uh, hell that's been 10 years now uh almost yeah what, uh, what are you what are your thoughts on that on that recording i think the production is damn good on that yeah i like uh i i, I i'm real happy with it um and i i like the the remix that ola did because he balanced out some of the harmonies yeah. um and uh and got it more um just more more in your face um so yeah i, I i'm real happy with 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 that recording it, it there was a lot of um you know because i'm very particular so i was like back and forth at different studios you know um i mean it, it took like we actually started that recording i think it was 20 10 or 2011 and we actually had it recorded at, um and i had it scrapped um like the tempos weren't right you know everything it just you know and i'm like let's start all over and um yeah that's what we did yeah you that's know? uh that uh and then let me see this i wanted to talk about the cover i guess it was put as a bonus but it was on a on that EP, I believe. Oh but, yeah. But uh, and I, I think I told you that. So let let's listen to a little bit of it.
right, I just had to get to that part just to get to that part because uh, it's cool that you did the the real version, the morbid yes. version, not the not the 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 shitty uh, 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 what is it uh. What's that, schizophrenia. What's that? Schizophrenia. The schizophrenia. Oh, I know. Like, get in it. Get in it. Get in it. It's like, come on, man. I know. I, I, I gotta, I gotta tell you, um, like the you know, My Cure Records was a, a, a local uh, record store, and they were doing a, a series of the local bands. And the criteria of this series was you had to have a, 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 a original song and a cover song. Yeah. So. And it had to be within the, you know, the time frame of that seven inch, you know, you know, I think it was 45 or something. And so then, you know, so we, we had like, you know, the limitations of the time. So then we were all like, everyone's given all these like bizarre, like, you know, let's do a twisted sister cover. I'm like, no, whatever, you know, like it just wouldn't sound right, you know, and then, and, and, none of us were agreeing and we we're getting to like the silly band fights, you know, cause it was just not like, uh, nights. Uh, yeah, Sam, we want it. Yeah. The, the night song from Siller. <laughs> yeah. Sam, you're giving out, you're giving out our secrets, but, uh, uh, that is a heavy song. Night songs. Um, night song. <laughs> I'm sure Scott, I'm sure, I'm sure but, uh, Scott Carroll, uh, ripped off a Cinderella riff for a, uh, sign night <laughs> song. Like he did rap. But but we uh, whenever we were uh, trying to figure out a, a song to agree on, I said, look, we're not going to re-record a classic that already has like a great recording because we're not going to do it justice. I'm like, we got to think of a band that is like cult classic that just doesn't have a good recording. Who is that? Sepatora. You know, <laughs> draw, you know, so morbid visions is like, there we go. Like, because we can't do worse than them, you know, like, <laughs> be, because they were out of tune. It's, it's like, if anything, we, we will be in tune, you know, so that'll make us sound like, like, like we'll do them like, you know, justice, you know? So that's why, you know, like, okay, great. You know, we picked a song like this will fit perfectly on a seven inch. And then we go to practice it and Robin starts playing the schizophrenia version. I'm like, oh, what are you no. doing? And she's like, yeah, like this is, and, and I'm like, and then her and I are fighting over which version to do. And I, 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 I had like a firm foot down on that. I'm like, I am not doing schizophrenia version. Like it's like <laughs> off. I'm like, it's completely off the table then if that's the case. And uh, so she's like, whatever, you know, and, <laughs> but, oh, yeah, but that's yeah, the, that's, the, that's the only version that, 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 that counts that matters. I mean, and, on, I, yeah. and, and that, and that was very hard to do. If you, if you look at the, um, I was trying to imitate uh, Max's vocal phrasing, which was the oh. bad English. Oh yeah, yeah very yeah, yeah. hard, very hard to do. And if you look at the lyrics of the album, they don't match with what he's doing. Oh, so I, so I, so what I did is I like I had everything like typed out, and I started scratching off. I, I would just like listen to it and start scratching off that word, scratching off that word, that word, you know, and try to make it sound like I'm gonna sing like him. But the very last, um, uh, uh, like lyrical, uh, like phrase or whatever of um, <laughs> uh, of that 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 they have listed, it's not on there. Yeah, yeah. It can't. It can't be. I mean, it, it can't be because like, I went through like 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 a freaking scientist. Like, okay, so this is that he's saying this here. He's right there. I'll be like, okay, now I'm left. Uh, I'm left with all these bolts. Like where, where, where do they go? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, so I think they just had the lyrics and they just like printed it, but it's not really what they were saying. I could be wrong. I could have totally, you know, you know, interpreted it completely no, wrong. No, you're but right. But I, I'm pretty sure I'm right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, but uh, it, it's a uh, has has. Do you know if Max has heard that? I don't know if Max has, but the rest of the guys have on our Dercata page. You can see like um, Andreas and the and the the newer uh, they oh, really? uh, the yeah like uh, Robin um, was on tour with them or whatever. So she's yeah. letting the them listen to them, and they were all giving the thumbs up and all that. So nice. so that was cool. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so That's they, awesome. they they liked it, and I, I I did my own version of lead. I made up my own lead because I couldn't figure out theirs. 
<laughs> well, I, I'm sure he just, you know, they didn't. He couldn't play. It was like it was like crazy. Yeah, it was like crazy. So I'm like, I, 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 I don't make sense to that. Like only only Gyro Hyde OT can play that. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, that's that's fucking classic. That that's a that brutal ass version too. Um, of that song, and I was like, yeah, I don't know if Max. I, heard it, I, I was like, man, I'm glad, I'm glad it's not the the shitty version. Yeah, yeah, we even did like the count. I I wanted the count in the beginning, yeah. like Hell yeah, right. like yeah. If someone knows Max, because I, I don't know Max, send it to a Max. Uh, see what he says. I, I, I know John. Know. John knows Max. John, uh, Alex Alex Books knows him pretty well. They toured with him. Yeah. Ross and Emulation toured with him, right? Yeah, I have to get the, I have to get them the the put you know, yeah. pass it over to him, see what he thinks. Yeah, Emulation well, Emulation toured with the, the the Cavalera brothers or whatever. So, I'm sure I'm sure they can get get uh get it to him somehow. But uh, anyway, well, cool. Uh, I'm gonna start winding this down. We've been going like two hours now. So. Yeah, yeah, we're um, like we're like doing a Roy point. No, podcast. we're not even close to that. So I had some other photos, but I should have checked with you first before I show them. So, actually, you know what? This one, this one will be okay. One last one. This one made me laugh because uh, it. I think we talked about this on the six point six six thing. This oh thing yeah. Right here. I mean, I I, I like. I, I, it's cool that the bands and all that, but my favorite thing is Z twenty eight Camaro. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! That was my brother. My brother did that. Yeah. Oh, he wrote that. Yeah, that was his his book. That that was um, his uh, writing and all that. But oh, okay. yeah, that um, if you know, if people that if, that feels so neat writing on like the pages of a book. I can't even right. explain it. Like people need to try it. You know. No. Yeah, I used to do that too. I mean, like school books, they would like get in trouble over it but ah whatever what are you gonna do you know um just write it on the school books but and write, make your own like scorpions logo or whatever yeah but yes yeah, i mean yeah like van halen uh that was uh like doing the vh and the twisted sister like just yeah, doing, exactly. the TS. yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah those are easy enough uh but yeah the irock z28 camaro i mean that was like that was the car you know uh back then so I uh, I had I think I've mentioned it before on the show, but I had a cousin that had uh had one. It was like a had the big Pontiac Firebird logo on the hood and like had the T top. That's what my dad we have we're gonna restore. Oh wow um I, and I, I want it. Um but it's like it's a ninety two, I think it is, and it doesn't have the bird. Um you know, but it but it's black. Um a friend of his uh gave it to my dad um yeah. but it has a really good engine and all that kind of stuff um i i want i want the the burr on it yeah i, I remember his i, was, I thought my my cut he was you know he was quite a bit older than me i thought he was like the coolest dude ever and this made me laugh yeah <laughs> the cat the cat fits perfectly like <laughs> same facial expressions yep that's hilarious so I'll just oh, uh, Sam, Sam's asking about Rhea. Rhea, um, I, I Jim was friends with Rhea, so that's how I met Rhea. Um, she was going to play bass in the band, and um, it ju it just never happened. Um, you know, she was uh, I think she was in Somnus at the time, but she did do the intro to um, the Begotten. Ah, sad. This is where Sam's going. But to the begotten sun seven inch so that intro um Rhea wrote and we sometimes open that live with that yeah cool all right last one what's going on here can you see it oh yeah oh yeah that yeah that was uh we went on a ghost investigation um to an abandoned <laughs> um mental hospital wow. it starts with an, yeah it starts with an h um i can't remember where it was at like hill hillsdale or something, i don't know um but um i was doing like uh 
like going to ghost things, trying to see if there was something, you know, ever found that I, I never know wherever, wherever we went, like I never had any experiences, but one of the things was um, like Michael Graves did one with us up at Conneaut Lake. Um, and, wait, wait, uh, Michael, Gra Michael Graves from the Misfits guy? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I got a I got a picture. I can send that to you. Um, we went to Conneaut Lake, um, but uh, but this was a Durkata one, and it was freezing cold, and uh, I don't know. There, you know, sometimes creepy things happen. But yeah, that was um, that's funny. That was that was us going on a ghost in, in, <laughs> investigation <laughs> and just freezing our ass off. Cool. Well, uh, I guess we'll end it now. Uh, I want to thank you for 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 coming on, uh, mm -hmm. hanging out Thanks with for us for a while. Thanks for having me. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed it. I, I had fun uh, fun doing this. I'm glad I'm able to do these again. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's cool uh, uh, getting being able to do these. I'm glad I started doing these because I've been having a blast. It's you know, if I don't have stuff going on with any band or whatever, I I got this because I'm one of those people that has to fucking do something all the time. So yeah. Uh, yeah, like, here, Martin, like I, I just fucking... go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, like I didn't know we we played a fest together. Oh like, yeah. Here with Sam. Yeah. I we found sure that did. out today. Yeah, we both played Day of Death too. Yeah. I played with, with Sam at at, at uh Did well, we talk? I, no. I, I I whenever I'm in I'm in like in in in, in uh out in public I'm like just like uh I just really socially awkward so, yeah me too me, me too me too so well, I, I guess we'll end it on this then uh uh we this was probably i think this was at the show uh brian no that uh, no that was that was actually i think our first show um oh, okay in in like 2010 i think it was or something oh, okay. uh or oh 2011 the, the photo has oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah the photo has 2011 um, sick. What, yeah. With, with, what's with, the what what year or what it says January 16th. Yeah, that, I, I think I think that was our first show. Um and uh Brian brought down the uh the book. Yeah, yeah, Brian Brian I mean Brian was the best. I I've I've mentioned him so much on my show. Uh Brian was cool. He was he was he was he was the reason him and Sam were the that I got to go up there and and, and play play out of state. Were you were you in Splatteria? No, I know those guys, but yeah. no, 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 I know those guys. Some of those guys played in a band with me later on, but no. Uh, but yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, but yeah, that was that that was cool. That was actually it was actually a lot of fun that weekend. I had a blast. Um, it was it was cool. Uh, I know Brian, uh, Brian was mega stressed out that weekend, but. You know, it was, uh, uh, and uh, I could see why, but it was, it ended up being. Yeah, the turnout, the turnout wasn't that good, but I had made arrangements with Brian because I had asked him, I said, how are pre-sales? And he's like, not good. And I had said to him that, you know, if, if it's, uh, comes down to it, you know, like, we'll take a late payment, you know, like, I don't want you to not, you know, be able to pay your rent, you know, if it comes down to something like that so um yeah he was real appreciative of that because that had to happen um yeah. you yeah, know he, I, he was awesome he actually took uh me and my buddy matt and cam lee they took us to uh to niagara falls, so falls. That was awesome. yeah there's, i always laugh because there's a photo of me and like just me and cam lee like looking at the falls and i'm like i'm at the fucking falls with cam lee because of brian patterson you know what i mean so, yeah it was, it was, it was. Yeah, it was Cam cool. came up on and sang with, with me. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, rem I remember. I remember. So, mm -hmm. uh, but, but yeah, that was cool. Uh, so, anyhow. Uh, all right. Well, I want to thank everybody that's uh, been in the chat. It's actually been a pretty active lately on these shows. So, it's cool. I appreciate it. If you're still here, tell your friends about the show, subscribe to the channel. And uh, there's a, a bunch of other stuff. There's actually another little five, six minute episode with, with Sharon that we did like about a month ago, I guess. Need to check that out. Uh, you know, check them all out. And 
Also, uh, don't forget to support my brother Roy Fox's Death Metal Podcast. Uh, we we help each other out as much as we can, so I want to give a little yeah, shout Roy. Out we're gonna do the vinyl, so <laughs> you're hopping on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, but yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, Sharon, Sharon, uh, you know, thanks again for for doing this. It was cool. Uh, if you could help me out with Jill, it'd be cool. I know I know people would like to to see her yeah, maybe come on she'll here. She'll definitely do it. Uh, I mean, I don't see why not. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> Sam. We'll yeah, that. Sam. Yeah, Sam. Uh, he Sam's always the troublemaker of the crowd. He always mm -hmm. has to bring up the. Yeah, the, 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 the stuff the, we don't talk about. He uh, he's Facebook friends with her too. It's like Jesus, Sam. Is he really? Yes, <laughs> troublemaker. <laughs> so anyhow, so uh, again, uh, thank you. If you could just, if, if you don't mind sticking around for a couple minutes, that way I can tell everybody goodbye and uh, okay. I'll, I'll I'll see you here in a second. Again, thank you very much. Yep, thank you. All right, there it is. Cool. Uh, and thanks everybody for hanging out. It was cool. Uh, seeing a lot of you know different people, a lot of the same people. So again. You're still here, still watching this on the replay or here. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. Like like the videos too. Let let the people that are on here know. You're not doing it for me. Let them know that you, you're enjoying, enjoying the shows. Uh, appreciate it. Roy, Scott, Jeff, um, everybody, Sam, uh, Tom, uh, Fraser, uh, Robert Nero, Robert from Nero One. I know I saw you, Ruby, uh, Derek, all kinds of people, man. Uh, Erica, I hadn't seen you out here in a while. Uh, we had people from fucking other countries show up today. Crazy. So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, on the comments on this, once this goes off, let me know who, who you want to see on the show. Uh, maybe I can get them. Maybe I can get them. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Y'all are rule. Uh, so, yeah. So let me uh, leave you guys with probably, probably the greatest song ever recorded. And I will see you in the chat on the next one.